since before we can write data into a database, we must first create one. Therefore, we will start by learning the data definition language, the set of commands that, you let, that let you define your database structure. In this module, we will look at the SQL commands for defining the structure of the database and the tables that will contain the data. You would not be able to practice these commands on the special SQL online editor as it is a common SQL database for everyone and by modifying the structure, you could affect the ability of the other SQL commands to work. However, if you have a local setup on your machine for running SQL commands, you can practice these on that setup. As each and every data goes into a container, so you must have the container as a first step towards managing your data. The create database command lets you create a new database. The name of the database is a single parameter for this command. Go ahead and try the create database command to create the database with the name mydb. Once again, note that each SQL command ends with a semicolon. MS SQL Server, MySQL Server, Oracle, these are all examples of softwares that are database servers. They can have multiple databases created in them. The use command allows you to choose the database on which you will work and the SQL commands that you execute after that work on this database. Enter the command to choose the database mydb. If you made a mistake in naming a database and want to start all over again or now you think that the database of, is of no use and you want to create a new one, you can completely remove this database from the database server by using the drop command. However, be extremely careful while using this command as it will cause all the data in the database to be destroyed forever. Enter the command to delete the database mydb. Now that we have seen the commands to create, use and delete a database, let's look at the commands to create tables. Tables are the structures in a database that hold the data. The create table command creates a table. After the table name, you can also specify the names, types and the sizes of the columns that the table will have. After all, the real data gets stored in these columns, as you can probably make out from the names of these columns. In the example here, we create a table with the name department having two columns, the department name and the department ID. The first column is of varchar, which is like a string and the other is a number which can store integers. You can also see that the maximum size of the department column is specified as 25, which means that it can store up to 25 characters. Each column is separated from the other by a comma. Don't worry about what is a varchar or a number. We will look at these in more detail later when we study data types. Let's now create this table. Type in the command for creating the table. Also add a third column called the location ID which is of the type number. Note that the column declarations are enclosed in round parentheses and the individual column names are separated with commas. A very powerful but also very dangerous command is the truncate command. This is used to delete all the data from a table. The syntax is simple. Just type truncate table and then the table name and all the data from this table name will be deleted. Be extremely careful while using this command. The example here shows the table contents before and after executing the truncate command. Please note that this is not the same as a drop command. The drop command would delete the table from the database, whereas the truncate command deletes only the data in the table, but the table remains there, although it is empty now. 